Hi, I am Dr. Selvaraj, <coughs> your surgical educator from Malaysia. Welcome back to my series of surgical teaching video class. These are meant mainly for undergraduate medical students doing the surgical clerkship rotation. I promise you will become competent in clinical problem solving and surgical decision making if you are going to watch these videos over and over again. Today, in this episode, I am going to discuss one more image-based questions in vascular surgery. So our patient here, you are seeing the first picture here shows the hands of a 20 years old secretary taken on a warm sunny day when she is usually free of symptoms. However, the left hand has just been immersed in a bowl of water with ice cubes floating in it for a period of five minutes. So this is the left hand. Below two pictures, these two pictures are showing the hands of a patient with scleroderma. So these are the three pictures. These two hands belong to the same patient. One hand is, this is the right hand and left hand is immersed in a bowl of water with ice cubes. So these are the eight questions. And the second and third pictures are a patient's uh, with scleroderma, a patient's hands, showing here patient hands with scleroderma. This, this patient is suffering from scleroderma. So these are the eight questions. Question number one, what do you notice about the appearance of the left hand? Question number two, what disease do you suspect she has? Question number three, what are the clinical features of this condition? Question number four, what is the assumed pathology of this condition? Question number five, what other conditions produce arterial impairment in the upper limb? Question number six, figure number two, that is this one, and figure three are in a patient with scleroderma, how it differs from the first patient. Question number seven, what are all the investigations to be done in this patient? Question number eight, what treatment can be advised to this patient? Now, I request my viewers to pause the video and try to answer all these eight questions. So after answering all these eight questions, kindly clarify your answer with the correct answers I am going to discuss in the subsequent slides. Question number one, what do you notice about the appearance of the left hand here? So the correct answer is, the left hand has become bluish white compared to her right hand. The left hand now also become painful, tingling and it is also numb. This exactly mimics what her hands and feet feel like in cold weather. The affected digits may go through a classic sequence of color changes including pallor due to the severe vasospasm in the dermal vessels, that is to begin with. After that, as the hand is warmed and the capillaries are slowly filled up with deoxygenated blood and the part will become cyanos. This is the next color chain. And after that, as the arteriolar spasm completely passes off, blood enters more quickly and the part become red and swollen 
and this is called rubber or redness. This is the sequence of color change that will happen in the in the hand, the left hand, which is exposed to cold weather. Question number two: What disease do you suspect she has? The correct answer is patient is having what is called Raynaud's disease or primary Raynaud phenomenon. There is no underlying associated disease. The exact cause is idiopathic. Question number three: What are the clinical feature of this uh, uh, this condition? <laughs> the correct answer is: It nearly always affects females. Cold, painful, numb hands, dating back to childhood, and occurring in cold weather. Symptoms are absent or much milder in warm weather. The extremities become bluish white when exposed to cold. Gangrene of tips of the digits may occur, but very rare. As the hand is warmed and the circulation improves, the affected areas turn red and throb. Peripheral pulses are always palpable. Question number four: What is the assumed pathology of this condition? The correct answer is idiopathic spasm of digital arterioles. That is the underlying pathology. The peripheral pulses are perfectly normal in this vasospastic condition. Question number five. What other conditions produce arterial impairment in the upper limb? The correct answer is variety of vascular diseases can produce ischemic symptoms and signs in the upper limb. These are grouped together under the term Raynaud's phenomenon. In contrast to the Raynaud's disease. These include arterial trauma, embolism, arteriosclerosis, cervical rip, scleroderma, other collagen diseases, and cryoglobinemia, and workers using vibrating tools. In contrast to patients with Raynaud's disease, gangrene of the fingers may occur in these patients question number 6 figure 2 and 3 are in a patient with scleroderma or those patients who are having some other pathology underlying pathology to develop <coughs> raynaud's this is called secondary raynaud phenomena and how it differs from the first patient this is primary Raynaud's uh, phenomenon. So the so the primary Raynaud phenomenon is more common, whereas the secondary Raynaud phenomenon or Raynaud syndrome is less common. It affects the primary Raynaud affect women under 30 years of age. Whereas secondary Raynaud's phenomenon occur uh, after the age of 40 years. Mild symptoms is the characteristic feature of primary Raynaud's, whereas serious symptoms are characteristic feature of secondary Raynaud's. There is no known exact cause for primary Raynaud's uh, <coughs> Raynaud's disease. Whereas, uh, sorry, Raynaud's phenomenon. Whereas, for sec secondary Raynaud's phenomenon, there are associated other medical conditions like scleroderma. Usually, no treatment is needed for primary Raynaud's uh, phenomenon. Whereas, if it is a secondary Raynaud's phenomenon, that requires more aggressive treatment. Sex, age, climate. and family history are 
main factors for primary Raynaud's disease, uh, sorry, Raynaud's phenomenon, whereas always there is some other associated conditions like uh, scleroderma or repeated trauma to the hand or use of venile chloride or these are all the things, some other pathologies is there always in case of secondary Raynaud's phenomenon. Question number seven, what are all the investigations to be done in this patient? The correct answer is, you can do arm presses on both sides, segmental presses on both sides, bilateral, digital pulse volume recordings, duplex scan for axillary and brachial arteries, CT angiogram or MR angiogram, selective arteriogram, thermal photography, mapping the skin temperature. These are all the investigation can be done. Number eight, what treatment can be advised to this patient? The correct answer is some patients emigrate to a hot and sunny climate. For those less fortunate, the use of heated gloves and boots is advised during cold weather. Smoking should be stopped as well as beta blockers. Vasodilators like calcium channel antagonists like diltiazem and nephidapine should be taken. Cervical sympathectomy is not a very effective procedure for this pathology. So thank you very much for watching this video. If you think that these videos are very useful, kindly share this in your social media and subscribe to this channel. Kindly click the bell button also to get notified regarding my latest uploads. Thank you once again for watching this video. Let us meet in an yet another episode. Until then, bye-bye.